Hi, it's Cayman Reynolds, and I've got a quick little video for you. I want to show you a different style of mating queens. It's a little bit of a different take on a queen castle, and I think it's really cool, and they're going to be one of our vendors at our Hive Life conference. However, before I get into that, I want to say I'm going to be in West Virginia in just a handful of days, and it's going to be Fairmont, West Virginia at the West Virginia Beekeepers Association. So I'm going to leave that link in the top comment and pin it in the description. I'm already going to see several of you there, but if you're in the West Virginia or nearby area, come up there and see me. I'm going to be up there talking on single brood management, honey production, uh, making the most out of your splits, how to grow your hobby into a sideline or small professional business, and doing a lot of questions and answers and just hanging out the whole time. So if you got an availability, I'll see you just in a handful of days or so. And now let's get to the mating nuke right here. So this comes from Bailey Bee Supply. I'll leave their website down below. They're going to be at our Hive Life conference this year and this is a really neat take and I think a great way to raise queens. There's so many different methods out there but one of the things I have uh, kind of the most frustration with with some of the, the types. It's not that they're bad but I personally don't like them is changing the frame sizes. Most of us already use deep Langstroth frames, and so I prefer a system that already goes right in along with what we have because it's easy. We go to a couple colonies like this back in here, and let's say we purchase some queens or we're raising our own queens or we purchase queen cells. Well, this is great right here because you have your dividers in the center. You can have three deep, three deep, three deep. And what I love quite a bit is that there is a screen bottom board. This is really essential in those hot June, July, and August days. And these little colonies have a hard time regulating because, well, they're little. But they also need a lot more protection, and that's a kind of a, a double-edged sword. You don't want to have a big entrance. If you'll look down in here, there is about a half of an inch or well, no, three quarters of an inch of an entrance right here is what I like to say. And there's one on this side, and there's one back here in the center. And this is critical to have a small entrance so you don't encounter robbing during those periods of dearth. And also to protect the hive a little bit more from pests, yellow jackets, those kind of things. But then again, it's really difficult if it's a solid bottom board for them to regulate and keep the hive cool. And that's where that screen bottom board is um, extremely handy so I'm just going to take that up real quick and you can see there are dividers in here that will match up with these dividers and you get a perfectly cut off segment it goes all the way down and you can see the notched grooves right in here and I just uh, I really like doing my queens this way so how would you start something like this so what I personally do is find a frame of about you know two-thirds brood I prefer capped brood because it won't take so long for them to emerge and help the colony out so one good frame of brood with the, the bees adhering on that now always calculate that some of those bees are foragers and that they are going to fly back to the original colony so we have to make sure that there's enough bees in these compartments to guarantee they can keep that brood warm because if they don't then it's a complete loss that brood will be lost and they'll be going backwards they're not strong enough to take a hit so one frame of brood with the adhering bees I'm gonna give a shake of bees this is preferably from a frame of larvae so why larvae because the nurse bees the ones that don't fly have to individually feed those so we just make sure we don't get the queen shake a frame of larvae the frame of brood with adhering bees and then if we have a comb we'll give them a comb and a foundation you can give them two combs if you have that or you can give them two foundations if that you have that as well now you can give them food like a frame of syrup or honey however you want to make sure that you don't give them too much to guard with small hive beetles and I don't use small hive beetle traps all year long, but when I do heavily use traps, it's always in mating nukes. As soon as you put them in, put a beetle trap in there and go ahead and start chipping away at those beetles because they prefer little colonies to infest because it's easier for them to um, bully their way to what they want to do. So now we have all that set up right there. 
And if you don't have that frame of honey, you decide not to, or you just don't have it, that's where these blocks right here can be removed and a quart jar can be put in its place and it's cut off and completely sealed to where only this hive can access it. And you need to feed them um, fairly regularly until they have at least half to a full deep frame's worth of food. And, and don't let it get below a half frame of food um, at the least once you get it to that point. But you can put one in each one of these slots right here. And when, after you've made it up, you can take your purchased queen cage. Maybe you need some backup queens for your operation for later splits. It's always great to have some backup queens. I mean, it is the best thing ever to have extra queens. And because when, when you need them, you need them now. You don't need to wait 10 to 14 days and your bees are getting older and older and older and they're losing momentum and, and longevity. So you can drop that queen cage in there or drop a queen cell. Just make sure you put it right up against the brood because if you put it towards the edge or up on top and it's a cool day or an extra hot day, it might be harder for them to regulate the temperature of that cell. So anyways, this is just a little bit of a um, tip here for raising queens. I know it's late in the year, but Bailey Bee Supply will be at our conference. And they did not pay us for this video at all, but we are going to be doing a few promotional videos for the Hive Life Conference periodically. Just letting you know what's available. And the only thing this needs now is a telescoping cover. And we are set and good to go. So thanks for watching this video. Hope to see you in West Virginia on the 9th and 10th and of September, and we'll see you in the next video.